presentation is an overview of the content and resources for the National Science Olympiad, NSO, Division B 2019 Solar System event. My name is Claire Birch, and I am a former competitor in both B and C Division Science Olympiad and a physics and math major at Harvard College. I am helping to develop the astronomy event materials for middle and high school competitors. The 2019 National Science Olympiad competition will be held at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York from May 31st to June 1st, 2019. The recommended resources for this event will be discussed at the end of the presentation and will be available on the official Solar System website. The webinar and transcript are posted online and the accompanying PowerPoint presentation will be posted and available for download on the NSO website. This is the second year for Solar System in the B Division Astronomy event rotation. In 2017, the B Division Astronomy event was reached for the stars, and in 2018, the Solar System Rocky Body focus was on the inner solar system. The focus of this year's Solar System event is Earth's moon and other rocky bodies, particularly in the outer solar system. Each team may bring two 8.5 by 11 inch two-sided pieces of paper containing information in any form from any source for use during competition. The notes may be used during all parts of the event. No calculators will be allowed for this event. The first focus of this event is identification and knowledge of the geologic surface features and internal structure of the objects listed in the first part of the rules. The second focus of this event is demonstrating understanding and ability to apply knowledge of physical and geologic processes associated with the solar system's geologic bodies, as well as the missions and measurements made by scientists to understand these objects. The objects in the solar system included in this year's event and listed in part one of the rules are the dwarf planets Pluto, Ceres, Haumea, Makemake, Eris, as well as the Earth's moon, Saturn's moons, Mimas and Phoebe, and Pluto's moon, Charon. Students are expected to be able to identify surface features by name and classification, and to be familiar with the surface feature nomenclature systems for each object. Specifically, this year's event also includes centaurs, trans-Neptunian objects, trojans, Oumuamua, 2007-OR10. Students should be familiar with the history of entire objects and hypotheses regarding their formation, as well as the geologic history of the objects and the formation of different geologic surface features. Students should understand what internal and external factors contribute to the evolution of the surfaces of these objects and be prepared to compare and contrast these characteristics. The largest geologic or rocky bodies in the outer solar system are dwarf planets. Students should be familiar with the internal and surface composition and evolution of these objects, with a focus on their geologic properties. It is important for students to develop an understanding of each of these objects in the context of the entire solar system, as well as the events that may have contributed to the formation and evolution of each. The official designation of a dwarf planet, according to the IAU, is a minor planet that has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so that it assumes a hydrostatic equilibrium, or nearly round, shape. A minor planet is any object in the solar system that is classified neither as a planet nor a comet and directly orbits the sun. Caltech astronomer Mike Brown has devised devised a likelihood scale for candidate dwarf planets that now describes over 200 such objects in the solar system. In the same manner as last year, questions about the Earth will be limited to Earth's relationship with the Moon, as will be discussed later on in this presentation. Ceres is the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system and is also technically an asteroid because it is found in the asteroid belt. The internal structure of Ceres is suspected to consist of freshwater ice mantle surrounding an inner rocky core. Its surface composition is similar to C-type asteroids, with the presence of graphite, sulfur, and sulfur dioxide indicated by spectral tests. Its atmosphere is composed mostly of water vapor. The bright spots on the surface of Ceres, known as faculae, are composed of highly reflective salt, which may be indicative of hydro hydrogeolic activity on Ceres. Ceres was studied primarily by the Dawn spacecraft in 2015. Next up is Pluto, the dwarf planet that was classified as a planet until 2006, when the IAU changed its classification to dwarf planet because one of the requirements to be a planet is that the object must have cleared its orbit of all objects of non-negligible mass. 
Pluto is the fourth dwarf, first dwarf planet discovered, and its existence was actually predicted in the 19th century by Newtonian mechanics based on perturbations in Neptune's orbit. Pluto is in a 2-3 orbital re resonance with Neptune. Pluto is tilted 120 degrees relative to its orbital plane, so it experiences extreme seasons. In fact, one quarter of Pluto is always in shade and one quarter is always exposed to the sun. Pluto's surface is composed primarily of nitrogen ice, and it has a number of geologic processes that have either currently or historically been responsible for shaping its surface, including potentially tectonics, cryovolcanism, and mass wasting. Pluto's internal structure is not well understood, but may contain liquid water and is responsible for the heating of its surface. There is a complex relationship between Pluto's atmosphere and its surface, which sublimates at the interface. Pluto is defined by many notable geologic features, including the Sputnik Planitia and the heart-shaped Tombaugh region. Pluto has five major moons, the largest of which, Charon, will be covered later in the presentation. Pluto is the namesake of the Plutoids, or ice dwarfs, which are dwarf planets that are found outside the orbit of Neptune. Scientists suspect that there may be up to 200 Plutoids in the solar system. The next dwarf planet is Haumea. Haumea is notably long, elliptically shaped, and rapidly rotating. It has a rotational period of only four hours. Haumea is the fastest rotating object that has settled to a hydrostatic equilibrium, meaning it has a static distribution of differentiated layers in its interior based on layer density. This is a requisite for classification as a dwarf planet. Haumea's relatively high albedo suggests that it is likely covered by water ice and may have formed as a result of a collision between larger trans-Neptunian objects. Haumea has a debris ring of radius 2300 kilometers and is the first discovered debris ring for a trans-Neptunian object. Haumea's high density may indicate silicon materials in its core. Haumea has two moons. Next up is Makemake, which is another dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt. Makemake has a very cold surface composed of organic and nitrogen ices, specifically methane. Makemake's atmosphere is similar in composition but lower in density to that of Pluto and the other dwarf planets, largely because it has lower density and lower surface gravity. Little is known about Makemake's interior, though it is thought to be differentiated. Makemake has one known moon. Eris is the most massive and the furthest dwarf planet discovered from the Sun. Eris is a trans-Neptunian object and a scattered disk object, meaning that it has an extremely high orbital eccentricity and likely formed nearer to the Sun and was gravitationally ejected by the gas giant planets. Eris' surface is thought to be similar to Pluto, with large amounts of methane ice but without organic compounds, so it appears more right, white instead of red. The major satellites that are included in the 2019 version of Solar System are those large rocky satellites that have dynamic and very different surface geologies, as well as fascinating histories of formation and evolution. The satellites included in this year's version of the rules are Earth's moon, Saturn's moons Mimas and Phoebe, and Pluto's moon Charon. The moon has a differentiated internal structure, a fact that was surprising to many scientists given its size, composition, and distance from the Sun. Many scientists believe that a large impact early in the moon's history provided the necessary heat for the differentiation and emergence of a plagioclase-rich or lighter crust atop a mafic mantle. Moonquakes, the equivalent of earthquakes on the moon, are caused not by tectonics, but rather by thermal expansions and contractions as the moon rotates and continues to cool internally, as well as from tidal stresses created by Earth. You may have heard people reference the dark side of the moon, or the side of the moon that we never see from Earth. The moon is tidally locked with Earth, meaning the same side always faces us, and it has a synchronous orbit, meaning its rotation period and orbital period are the same. The geology of the moon, the study of which is called selenology, is characterized primarily by cratering and volcanism. Features known as highlands, dark plains called maria, and rills, domes, and grobbins are also found on the moon. There are many more craters on the far side of the moon than the near side, as it is ex exposed to bombardment coming towards the Earth-Moon system. The formation of the moon has long presented questions to scientists, as the moon is the largest satellite relative to its host planet in the solar system. 
One of the most favorite explanations of the formation of the moon is called the giant impact hypothesis and poses that the moon was created when a large body collided with Earth, breaking off a significant amount of material that then coalesced in orbit around Earth. Next up is Mimas, a moon of Saturn. Mimas is the smallest astronomical body that is known to be rounded in shape because of its self-gravitation. Mimas has a low density of only 1.15 grams per centimeter cubed, which indicates that it is composed mostly of water ice with only a small amount of rock. Mimas has a large crater, Herschel, that is associated with cracking that spreads across the entire face of the moon. Mimas has an irregular wobble that may indicate a non-spherical core or a global subsurface ocean. Thermal imaging has revealed irregular heating and is poorly understood. This may also indicate a subsurface ocean. Phoebe is another satellite of Saturn and is more irregular in shape. Phoebe is believed to actually be a captured centaur that originated in the Kuiper belt. Phoebe is roughly spherical and has a differentiated interior. It orbits Saturn in a retrograde orbit. Phoebe has a very low albedo and deep craters. Additionally, large quantities of ice below the surface and carbonate material on its surface have been observed by Voyager 2 and Cassini. Finally, students are expected to be familiar with Pluto's largest moon, Charon. Pluto and Charon are a binary system because the barycenter of their orbit does not lie within either object. Pluto and Charon are gravitationally locked, meaning the same sides always face one another. This is in contrast with the Earth-Moon system, in which only the Moon is gravitationally locked. This means that the same side of the Moon always faces Earth, while the same side of Earth does not always face the Moon. Charon has one-eighth of Pluto's mass. The reddish-brown cap of the North Pole of Charon is made up of organic molecules called tholins that may be derived from a combination of carbonate materials and gaseous methane and nitrogen transferred from Pluto's atmosphere. Charon's internal structure may be differentiated, but is poorly understood. Charon and Pluto were studied extensively by the New Horizons mission. Additionally important geologic bodies in the solar system, though not the outer solar system, are the main asteroid belt. The asteroid belt lies between Mars and Jupiter. There are three main types of asteroids characterized by composition and appearance. The C-type, or carbonaceous asteroids, are rich in carbon and have low albedo, meaning they are very non-reflective. C-type asteroids are more prevalent in the outer regions of the asteroid belt. S-type, or silicate asteroids, are commonly composed primarily of silicates, indicating the presence um, of heating and reformation after initial formation, which contributed to their relatively high albedo. These asteroids are more common towards the inside of the asteroid belt. M-type or metallic asteroids make up only 10% of all asteroids in the belt and are composed primarily of iron and nickel. It is unknown how M-type asteroids were formed, and many believe that they may be the cores of differentiated progenitor bodies that were later broken up. The asteroid belt contains hundreds of thousands of small rocky bodies that are unable to condense into a planet under the gravitational influence of Mars and Jupiter. The asteroid belt's Kirkwood gaps occur at distances between Mars and Jupiter's where no gravitationally stable orbits exist. 